welcome to St. Vincent College's 172nd spring commencement. We extend a very special welcome to the graduates and their loved ones who have he come here today to celebrate their achievement. On the platform today to celebrate this joyous occasion, the Right Reverend Douglas R. Nowicki of the Order of St. Benedict, Archabbot and Chancellor of St. Vincent, Mr. Christopher Donahue, Chairman of St. Vincent College's Board of Directors, Mr. Maxwell King, Honorary Degree Recipient and today's commencement speaker. We extend our warmest greetings to Mr. King's wife, Peggy, and our most special neighbor, Miss Joanne Rogers, wife of Mr. Fred Rogers. Also on the platform this morning, Brother Norman Hips of the Order of St. Benedict, President of St. Vincent College. Father Killian Locke of the Order of St. Benedict, Director of Campus Ministry. And Dr. Tracy McNelly, Assistant Professor of Education and Executive Secretary of Faculty Council, who represents the college's faculty on the platform today. Please remain standing, and gentlemen, remove your caps. After the national anthem, sung by the St. Vincent Singers, Archabbot and Chancellor Douglas R. Nowicki will offer the invocation. Following the invocation, you may be seated for the welcoming remarks by Brother Norman Hips. Good morning, as the Archabbot and Chancellor of St. Vincent, it is my privilege to join Dr. Smetenka in welcoming all of you to this 172nd spring commencement of St. Vincent College. And it is a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Congratulations, first of all, to the 2018 soon-to-be alumni of St. Vincent College. It is an especially beautiful day with the presence of Maxwell King, who's our distinguished commencement speaker, along with his lovely wife, Peggy, and again, to welcome our dear friend, Mrs. Joanne Rogers. As we gather to celebrate the many accomplishments of this class of 2018, we begin, first of all, by, on this Mother's Day weekend, by praying for our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunts, all those who have helped our graduates to come to this milestone moment in their lives. We also pray and ask God's blessings on our faculty, administration, alumni, and friends who have been such a source of hope and strength in the formation of our hearts and minds of our graduates today. With heartfelt gratitude to Chris Donahue, chair of the board of directors, and to his wife, Anne, who serve as co-chairs of our Forward Always Forward Capital Campaign currently in progress at St. Vincent, and to all who on this memorable day are a source of strength and hope to us. And so in the spirit of God's all-embracing love, my prayer today is taken from the diary page of Fred Rogers, 
which began with a quote from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, which reads, There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Fred writes, Before I make a television program, I always pray, Dear God, let some word that is heard be yours. He continues in his diary, one day, because of a mistiming in the television control room, I ended up with a half a minute more program than I had anticipated. That wasn't the only mistake of the day. There had been several, and some of them had been mine. For some reason, I was inspired to use that extra half minute to say to the camera, you've made this day special by just your being you. There's only one person in the whole world like you, and people like you, exactly as you are. I was surprised by what I said and the others in the studio were quite moved. I've been saying it on programs ever since. Children and adults have told me how helpful it is. We all long to hear that we're accepted exactly as we are. And of course, that's what Jesus demonstrates over and over again. And so dear God, in all that we do this day, let some word that is heard be yours, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's wonderful to be together. Thank you so much to parents, family, friends of our graduating seniors. You have supported and loved these young men and women who are about to become St. Vincent College alumni. And a special thank you to our graduates who are leaving their mark on St. Vincent, whether that mark has been in the classroom or lab or studio, ball field, golf course, swimming pool on stage or backstage, in the newsroom, in the library, the dorms, and the shack. The community that has been born and grown between and among you and among all of St. Vincent, we celebrate today and look forward to its continued growth in the future. When you began here, many of you four years ago, we assembled in the room next door and you received from our Archabbot and from me a little copy of the rule of St. Benedict. At that time I quoted from the rule, we intend to establish a school for the Lord's service. We hope to set down nothing harsh, nothing burdensome, but if for the good of all, there may be a little strictness to amend faults, to safeguard love, do not be daunted and run away. Congratulations on completing this leg of your life's journey. You also received from our student affairs office a little card that lists 10 hallmarks of our Benedictine education and brief descriptors of those values let me remind you of three. Humility, listen to others, grant forgiveness, admit any mistakes. Hospitality, welcome strangers, treat your neighbor as Christ. Prayer, take time for reflection and seek God. As you prepare to leave, let me remind you of chapter four of the rule, the tools of good works just a couple of bullets. The love of Christ must come before all else. You are not to act in anger or nurse a grudge. Rid your heart of any deceit. Never give a hollow greeting of peace or turn away when someone needs your love. Speak the truth with heart and tongue and never lose hope in God's mercy. May this rule and the hallmarks serve as companions for you throughout your life so that in Benedict's words, you will foster fervent love, supporting one another's weakness of body or behavior, that you prefer nothing, nothing whatever to Christ, and that he may bring us all together in life everlasting. Indeed, with great personal joy, I invite Max King forward along with Archabbot Douglas 
to receive an honorary degree and then to deliver our commencement address. Maxwell Everts Perkins King is the son of a mill worker and the grandson of a book editor who happened to have worked with Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Perhaps it was that unique upbringing that led him to view people's lives through a different lens. His experience as a merchant marine, journalist, philanthropic leader have shown him the challenges and opportunities that individuals faced in the past and in today. Upon graduating from Harvard University, he took his first job in journalism, where he thrived in the process of gathering information, gaining deeper understanding of a problem, analyzing the situation, and responding in a way that convinces people to take action. That journalistic process proved to be a great approach to run a large-scale philanthropic organization. As president of the Heinz Endowments for nearly a decade, Mr. King provided the leadership and vision in directing more than $500 million in grants to strengthen the southwestern Pennsylvania community. Mr. King's desire... He got some of it. <laughs> appropriately. <laughs> Mr. King's desire to make a positive difference in the lives of children and improve their education and opportunities brought him to the St. Vincent College community as the second executive director of the Fred Rogers Center for Early Learning and Children's Media. Stepping down as director in 2010, Mr. King continued his work with the Fred Rogers Center as a senior fellow, authoring the Fred Rogers biography to be released in September. But Mr. King wasn't done making an impact in our region. His current undertaking is community and donor-based philanthropy at the Pittsburgh Foundation. As president and CEO, he oversees a $1 billion charitable fund. His work speaks to a deep, lifelong commitment to public service and civic good. His is a tribute to the inherent value of a liberal arts education and compassionate citizenship. His leadership has improved lives, educational institutions, and the world around us through commitments to improving the environment. With all that he has done, Mr. King still likes to think of himself as a newspaper man. We like to think of him as a man of principle. For all this, St. Vincent College proudly confers upon you, Maxwell Everts Perkins King, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa at St. Vincent College this 12th day of May, 2018. <laughs> To have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Would you be mine? Won't you?
Thank you very much, Brother Norman. Uh, thank you, Archabbot Douglas. And thank all of you for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak with you this morning uh, at this very special occasion, the 172nd spring commencement at St. Vincent. Uh, it's so nice for me to be back here on this campus. As Brother Norman mentioned, about eight years ago, I worked here for a couple of years, and I enjoyed my work at the Rogers Center and at the college a great deal. But what I really enjoyed, uh, I think more than anything, was being on this campus. And uh, each day, most days, at noon, I would go out and take a walk, and I would walk around on the roads and paths between the buildings <coughs> and uh, up into the graveyard and around the fields. And then I would often go back uh, to the basilica and just sit on one of the back benches and meditate for five or 10 minutes. And I loved the beauty of the campus, but I think what I liked best of all was the feeling of being immersed in the very welcoming, inclusive, caring Benedictine culture that is here. So it's very nice uh, today to be back here and to be honored uh, by all of you. Now it's traditional at events like these for the speaker uh, to give a lot of advice and counsel to the graduating class about how to go out into the world, make your way in the world, and be successful and happy. And I'm going to skip most of that. I, I don't think I have a lot of good advice for you, frankly. Uh, other than to observe that the world that you're going out into is extraordinarily complex and intense and fast-paced these days. Uh, so I respect very much uh, the challenge you've been preparing for, and I respect the importance of the work that you will do. It is so much more uh, complex and intense than, we're all, than the world was 50 years ago when I graduated from, from college. <coughs> Recently, the RAND Corporation, which is the big national research firm based in Washington and California and Pittsburgh, came out with a report in which it uh, labeled the last 20 years, which is essentially your lifetime, as the age of acceleration, an age in which everything, uh, because of globalization and communications technology, has been going faster and faster and faster. I prefer to think of it as the age of complexity, because what I have seen in my lifetime as the dominant trend in America has been dramatic, increasing complexity of every facet of society, of, of government, of entertainment, communications, show business, academia, um, national defense, sports, everything has become much more complex. And so again, I respect uh, the challenge that you have and the work you've done to be ready for that challenge in going out into such a world. But today what I would like to offer to you is a counterpoint to that, something that you can put uh, on the side of all of the intensity and complexity you'll encounter, all the challenges that you'll face. Sort of a, a value that can be a North Star uh, to all of that. And the value I'm talking about is human kindness. Now, it may sound simplistic, maybe even a little bit silly to focus on that when you have so many challenges ahead of you. Uh, when you hear a political debate about the most important issues in our country, you don't hear people talking about human kindness. When you watch the cable news in the evening and see all the talking heads debating with each other or screaming at each other, uh, you don't hear a lot about human kindness. But I would offer to you the thought that it really is the single most important thing in the world. And I think if, if you look back on your lives, the things that have not only made a difference, but that are memorable, that you hold on to, that have shaped your perception of what's important in life. Things that you've gotten from your parents, 
from your teachers, from your friends, you'll see that the, the things that you look back on are usually those things that have to do with human kindness. There's a magazine that I like to look at occasionally, even though it can sometimes uh, seem a little bit simplistic and even silly, and that's Reader's Digest. But I enjoy it because they always have at least one article on human kindness. I think the most recent one I saw was about a motorcycle gang in Arizona going down the road and they pass a car where there's a man and a woman and four children struggling to change a tire. And the motorcycle gang members stop, help the family change the tire, and in so doing, they talk to them and they learn they don't have any money. They have just enough money for gasoline to get to California where they hope to find work. And so the members of the, all the riders on the motorcycle escort them down to a restaurant down the road and they buy them a meal and they give them enough money to have food on their way to California. Simple human kindness. When I think about things in my life that are most memorable, they have to do with this also. Uh, when I was a couple years younger than the members of the graduating class here today, um, I decided to quit college. I decided I didn't need a college education and that I wanted to join the Merchant Marine and travel around the world. So I grew up in Ohio and the nearest port to me was Cleveland. So I went up to Cleveland and I went to the Seafarers International Union Hall and I found the, the agent who ran the Union Hall and I told him about my dreams of traveling around the world. Uh, and after he had laughed for about a minute and a half, uh, he said, kid, don't be a moron. You, you, you can't get a berth on a ship if you don't have Siemens papers from the US Coast Guard. And you can't get Siemens papers from the Coast Guard unless you have a job. And guess what, kid? You don't have any seniority, so you're not going to get a job here. Now go home, go back to school, and get smart. But I didn't. <laughs> I stayed and I hung around and I got him a cup of coffee and I nagged him. And finally he said, well, there's one thing. It won't, probably won't work, but there's one thing you can do. If you're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every minute, eventually there'll come a time, 11 o'clock at night, 3 o'clock in the morning, when a ship comes in, they need an ordinary seaman, and there's nobody in the union hall, so you're the only one. And I said, well, how can I, how can I be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week? And he took me to a back storeroom, and he pointed to a cot, and he said, if you want to, you can sleep on this cot. There's a bathroom. There's no shower, but there's a sink and a toilet, and you can do what you want. So the second night there, he woke me up at 3 a.m., he said, an oar boat just came in. They need an ordinary seaman. They called me at home. Come on. He drove me down to the ship. He put me on the ship. He took my driver's license. He went to the Coast Guard, roused somebody at the Coast Guard, got my seaman's papers, came back to the ship, and at 6 a.m., he and I were standing on the fantail of the ship, smoking a cigarette, and I was saying goodbye to him. I will never forget that man. I will never forget his face. I will never forget his voice. I only knew him for two days. I worked that summer on, on the oar boats. I went to New York. I got a ship that took me up and down the East Coast, and then uh, to Europe, and then to Africa, and then to Asia, all around the world. Eventually, I wised up and went back to college, too. <laughs> but that sticks with me forever because of that simple act of human kindness. Uh, Brother Norman mentioned that I was at the Heinz Endowments in Pittsburgh. When I was there, a board member was Franco Harris, the great Pittsburgh Steelers running back from the 1970s and now a successful businessman and civic leader in Pittsburgh. Franco and I had to go to a school outside Pittsburgh that was for um, kids who had, who had run into problems with the juvenile justice system and were on their way to incarceration. And the school provided a, a lot of intense education and mentoring. When we got out there, we said to the headmaster, uh, 
we can only stay for an hour and a half. Both of us have another meeting, two other meetings, downtown at 3 o'clock, so we've got to leave at 2.30. So the headmaster showed us around, and then we got back to his office at 2.30, and he went to his desk, and he picked up a football, and he handed it to Franco, and he said, could you sign this for my father? He loves the Steelers. He loves you, Franco. So Franco got the father's name, signed the football, and he handed it back, and he said, well, where's your father now? And the man said, he's at home. I'm sorry to say he's dying of cancer. He's only got two weeks to live, and he's at home. And Franco said, let's go. And he never made his 3 o'clock meeting. He didn't get home for dinner that night. He spent several hours with that dying man talking about Pittsburgh and the Steelers and other things. Human kindness. I think the great uh, 20th century exemplar in America of human kindness is Fred Rogers. Um, Fred Rogers was a man who would wake up every morning at 5 a.m. to read the Bible and pray. But what he prayed for was not success. He didn't pray for his program to be better. He didn't pray for it to reach a bigger audience. He didn't pray for WQED, uh, where he produced his program, to do better. Uh, he didn't pray for uh, more success uh, of any kind. He prayed that he would be as good and caring a person as he could be that day. And he would envision that day. Fred would, would get up in the morning and he would almost game plan the day, the way an athlete will game plan a contest. And he would think about, who am I going to see this morning producing Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Who am I going to see at lunch? Who am I going to see this afternoon in meetings? And he would think about what those people might need and how could he be the most thoughtful, caring, compassionate person he could be. That's what mattered to Fred Rogers. As accomplished as he was, as a writer, as a producer of television, an innovator, an educator, uh, a pianist, a composer, a speaker, a writer of 20 books, all those accomplishments really didn't matter to Fred Rogers as much as human kindness. One of my favorite stories about Fred is when he and Bill Eisler, the president of the Fred Rogers Company, the production company, were in New York, and they were walking down the street, and they were in a big hurry to get to a studio in New York because there was a crew there on the clock costing money, and they were late. <clears throat> and Bill kept saying to Fred, hurry up, hurry up. And they passed a homeless person sitting on the sidewalk with his back to a brick wall with a cup beside him. And Fred stopped, leaned down to put a $5 bill in the cup, and the man spoke to him. The man didn't know who Fred was. He didn't know that he was a famous television personality. It was just another human being. And within seconds, Fred Rogers was crouched down on the sidewalk beside the man, talking to him about the weather, about how he survived on the streets of New York, about Fred's trip to New York. And Bill Eisler was going crazy trying to get Fred's attention and move on down the street uh, to get to the studio. But he didn't get Fred's attention. He was there for 20 minutes because there was only one thing that was important to Fred then. He was with another human being, and human kindness was what was important to him. One time, uh, Nancy Curry, who was a professor at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, and worked with Fred on uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on scripts. Nancy Curry and Joanne Rogers and Fred were having uh, dinner at the Saxonburg Inn outside Pittsburgh. Fred liked to go there because it was quiet. They could get a table in the corner where he could have a peaceful meal. And they had ordered their dinner, and they were sitting there waiting for it. And Fred was the one who noticed that just below the edge of the table, there was the little blonde head of a little boy. And Fred looked down, and the little boy looked up and said, Mr. Rogers, my dog died. 
and Fred Rogers was on the floor of the restaurant at the Saxonburg Inn talking to the little boy about his dog, what had happened, how the little boy felt. And then Fred was telling the little boy about when he was seven years old and he, Fred's dog, Mitzi died, and how he wanted to keep Mitzi. Even though Mitzi had died, he loved Mitzi and he wanted to keep Mitzi. And his father had to explain to little Fred what death was. So there was Fred Rogers on the floor of the restaurant explaining death to, the, to this little five-year-old boy. When Fred grew up, he was, and he grew up just a few miles from here in La Trobe, went to school here, went to church at the La Trobe Presbyterian Church with his parents, and he was very shy, he was very withdrawn, he had a painful childhood. Uh, he didn't relate to uh, his schoolmates, he didn't have a lot of friends, but his parents and his grandparents always treated him as the most serious person there was. They didn't treat him like a kid. They treated him like a grown-up, and they listened to his questions, they talked to him, they helped him, and so he always remembered that, that what made a difference in his life was caring adults who really paid attention to him, and that's what he made his life's work and, and tried to give back. Now, at the start, I mentioned the complex, intense world that you're going out into, and I really do respect the importance of the challenge that you all have in front of you. Uh, but I'd ask you to think about, as you consider what's needed to meet all the challenges you will have, I would ask you to think about living intentionally, as Fred did, not living accidentally, just responding to this and responding to that and trying to meet this challenge and trying to get, get to that deadline. You have to do all those things, and I respect that. But in the middle of it, you can live intentionally and focus on growing up in the families you grew up in, going to college at St. Vincent, what I know you share as a crucial value, human kindness. I'll just do one last very quick Fred Rogers story and then we'll get on with what is much more important business for all of you, I know. Two or three weeks after Fred died in 2003, the presents started arriving at the homes and offices of his friends and associates. <clears throat> Fred had gathered many mementos through his long career and he knew which of these mementos would mean something special to a host of people that he had as friends and associates throughout his career. So he asked Jim Okanak, who's the president of the McFeely Rogers Foundation here in Latrobe, to send out those mementos, uh, each one to just the right person. And in almost every case, there was no note accompanying the memento. Fred knew what it meant and he knew the recipients would know what it meant. And so, in a very real way, the gift was the message from this master of human kindness. Thank you so much, and congratulations to all of you. Now we recognize the accomplishments of the graduates who are gathered here today. The conferral of degrees will be done by school. Traditionally, we clap for each graduate, but only until they reach this podium, so the name of the next graduate can be heard. Dr. Gary Quinlevin, Dean of the Alex G. McKenna School of Business, Economics, and Government, will now preside over the conferral of degrees. Dr. William Hisker, Associate professor, or professor of Business, will hood our graduates receiving master's degrees. Management, Operational Excellence, Master of Science, Elprin Ars Lantis.
Dylan Paul Daglo. Donna Marie Gilvery. Denton Joshua Huff. Accounting, Bachelor of Science, Daniel Quentin Bolin, cum laude. <laughs> Gina Renee Bukovac. <laughs> Samuel David Chapis. <laughs> Emily Ann Egler. Thomas David Eshelman. <laughs> Mitchell Gregory Farrell, cum laude. <laughs> Adam Scott Gordish. Marshall William Grubb. <laughs> Annuel Jean Baptiste. <laughs> Evan Mitchell Jones, cum laude. Leah Michelle Keener, summa cum laude. <laughs> Patrick Liam Kelly, summa cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Ann Kunkel, cum laude. <laughs> Logan William Naraki, cum laude. Kim K. Ornis. <laughs> Molly Teresa O'Toole, summa cum laude. Courtney Warner Patterson. Justin Paul Ralph. <laughs> Dean Emmanuel Wilk. <laughs> Justin Frederick Yeckel. Business Economics, Bachelor of Science, Alexander Francis D'Ignazio. <laughs> Lawrence Garner Jaross. <laughs> Alexander Kenneth Krieger, summa cum laude. Daniel Abram O'Connor. John Frederick Wallin Jr. Economics Bachelor of Arts, Julia Victoria Lundy Magna Cum Laude.
Finance, Bachelor of Science, Emily Ann Abbott. Alexander Joseph Bolin, magna cum laude. Alexander Walter Dumkowski. Cheyenne Lynn Dunbar. Joseph Michael Ferraro. Michael Joseph Gruss. Colton Lee Hearn. Adam William Hubert, summa cum laude. Edward Martin Kilcary III. Kevin Michael Kuhn, magna cum laude. Melissa Ann McCarthy. Alexa Claire McNulty. Graham Robert Scheller. Finance and Mathematics, Bachelor of Science, Lauren Elizabeth Donnelly, magna cum laude. <laughs> International Business, Bachelor of Science, Jana Lynn Boberka, cum laude. <laughs> Paige Aston Casario, summa cum laude. Mary Agnes Reich. <laughs> Management, Bachelor of Science, Mary Jo Beth Burnaby Alameda. <laughs> Tyler Matthew Baustert. Gabriella Elizabeth Bobak. Reed Spencer Brinkhoff. Jason Hunter Capco. Jean Ellie Charles. <laughs> Patrick J. Coyle, cum laude. Matthew Thomas D'Amico. Austin Rice Dedert. <laughs> Dalton James Dietrich. <laughs> Sean Thomas Doyle, cum laude. <laughs> Zachary Robert Good. Sarah Elizabeth Hampton. <laughs> Courtney Jean Call, cum laude. <laughs> J. 
John Joseph Martius Magna Cum Laude, the second. <laughs> Serena Gabri Gabriela Martinez. Ashley Nicole McGraw. <laughs> Nia Leah Marie Morrison, cum laude. <laughs> Taylor Richard Moser. <laughs> David Tyler Rao. Lauren Nicole Reimer, cum laude. Joan Marie Smith, cum laude. Louis Donato Tate. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Wager, cum laude. Connor William Wedge. Nicholas John Werner. Ashley Rose, Yana Roberto, summa cum laude. Jesse James Yeckel, cum laude. Marketing Bachelor of Science, Kevin Dennis Augustine. Naomi Lynn Burke, cum laude. Matthew Edward Casey. Sullivan Demarest. <laughs> Kathleen Mary Egan. <laughs> Brandon Allen Fandel. <laughs> Sarah Jane Fiano. Lucas Anthony Good, cum laude. <laughs> April Dawn Goodman. <laughs> Melissa Marie Harris, summa cum laude. Eileen McElvain Keating Magna, oops, yes, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Emma Christine Lloyd Cum Laude. Janet Elise Nemec. Alexandra Claire Pitnaro. Matthew Shigio Tashima. Granville David Wagner. Chelsea Ray Zamborski. Political Science, Bachelor of Science, William Grabe Culver, Magna Cum Laude. Politics, Bachelor of Science, Zoe D. Farrell. Yeah. 
should be Bachelor of Arts. Noah Spencer Keys, summa cum laude. Braden Joseph Lashinsky, cum laude. Robert James Magin. Rebecca Ann McCullough, cum laude. Joining me in congratulating the McKenna School class of 2018. Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science, Margaret Ann Birmingham. Nicholas Cheston Borkowski, magna cum laude. Joshua Thomas Centaur, summa cum laude. Ashley Elizabeth Dubas, summa cum laude. Claire Elizabeth Gribbett, cum laude. Jennifer Marie Hasselou. Caitlin Victoria Johnson, summa cum laude. Tyler Regis Kuntz. Alyssa Marie Ledden, cum laude. Chase Joseph Merrick, cum laude. Caitlin Alexa Thomas, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Grace Volna. Katrina Delia Williams. Bioinformatics, Bachelor of Science, Tressa L. Halodnik. Miranda K. Jackson, cum laude. William Joseph Kohler, summa cum laude. Matthew Eric Whitaker. Biology, Bachelor of Arts, Haley Lynn Adams. Angela Irene Bayliss, cum laude. Rachel Elizabeth DeLeo, summa cum laude. Cameron Joseph Facek. Jason Matthew Fisher. Madison Elizabeth Gruss, magna cum laude. Matthew James Kenny, cum laude. Michaela Ann Levy. Garrett Allen McCall, magna cum laude. <laughs> Tyler
Tyler Curtis McFadden. Katie K. Slivko. Katie Elizabeth Smith. Ronald Paul Yunker, cum laude. Biology, Bachelor of Science. Emily Louise Aquaviva, summa cum laude. Maria Laura Beecher, magna cum laude. Lauren Marie Campbell, summa cum laude. Jacob John Green, magna cum laude. Colin Douglas Hall, cum laude. Taylor Angel Hansen, summa cum laude. Rachel Ann Haranchar, cum laude. Christopher Malik Dequan Holloman. Jason Robert Horan, cum laude. Claire Catherine Jackman, magna cum laude. Asna Khalid. Joshua Willem McCarg. Alexandra Lynn Piampiano, magna cum laude. Dylan Thomas Petrantoni, magna cum laude. Philip Nicholas Repepi. Kristen Anna Ross. Second Lieutenant Catherine Rose Strotman, cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Welteroth. <laughs> Carrie Alyssa Wiley, cum laude. Teresa Ann Unichko, cum laude. <laughs> Chemistry, Bachelor of Science, Sarah Lynn Haynes, cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Hosek, cum laude. Connor Richard McCormick, summa cum laude. Tyler Scott Sturcho. Computing and Information Science, Bachelor of Science. Rachel Nicole Bowman, cum laude. Anthony Michael Donatelli. Yeah. Jacob Joseph Feliciani, magna cum laude. Adam Richard Indoff. Sarah Catherine Kada.
Jeremy John Cursina, magna cum laude. Christian Riley Lewis. Mackenzie Thomas Mitterator. Jordan Caleb Page. Jacob Alfred Pizzuto. Jordan Bradford Reyna. August Austin Schatz. Samuel Thomas Smeal. Ryan Matthew Taylor, magna cum laude. Brandon Mickle Yant. Engineering Science, Bachelor of Science, Sean Patrick Anderson. Chaslin Page Derrickson. Alexis Scott Ellen. Andy Shaujia Greco, summa cum laude. Patrick Michael McCann. Brian Allen Schaefer. Environmental Chemistry. Bachelor of Science, Heather Orise Leclerc, magna cum laude. <laughs> Environmental Science, Bachelor of Science, Samuel A. Gear, magna cum laude. <laughs> David Richard Cost. Amy Marie McNeil, cum laude. Angela Nicole Panny. Catherine Lillian Stallings. Daniel Stephen Straka. Jennifer Colleen Urban, cum laude. <laughs> Integrated Science, Bachelor of Science, Robert Joseph Brennan. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Dorr. Tessa Elizabeth Fracola. <laughs> Jessica Daniela Gibbs, cum laude. <laughs> Chalambo Bridger Daniel Kawungo. <laughs> Destiny Nicole Kelly. Mariana Alexis Quo. <laughs> Catherine Kristen Mahoney, cum laude. <laughs> Claudia Rose Matthews. <laughs> Madison Elaine McGill, cum laude.
Mary Jo Michaels. Haley Marie Prinke. Sydney Marie Redensic. Babette San Martin, magna cum laude. <laughs> Mathematics, Bachelor of Science, Amanda Nicole Bernola, summa cum laude. <laughs> Lauren Nicole Drew. Robert Anthony Howard, magna cum laude. <laughs> Margaret Ann Nelson, cum laude. <laughs> Michaela Elaine Nolfi, cum laude. David Thomas Salapa, magna cum laude. <laughs> Physics, Bachelor of Science. Joseph Michael Marcinic III, cum laude. Ma summa cum laude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the Herbert W. Boyer School of Natural Sciences, Mathematics, and Computing. Art Education, Bachelor of Arts, Caitlin Elizabeth Kruzinski, summa cum laude. <laughs> Mariah Nicole Singerman, summa cum laude. <laughs> English, Bachelor of Arts, William Dennis Brown II. <laughs> Rachel Violet Glott, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sarah Marie Hennel. Anthony Michael Horner. Gabrielle Marie Cole. Amanda Michelle McMurtry, summa cum laude. Nathan Thomas Rakowski, summa cum laude. <laughs> Caitlin Margaret Shulo, cum laude. <laughs> Andrew Thomas Tagg. Graphic Design, Bachelor of Arts, Marsha Ann Poliak. <laughs> History, Bachelor of Arts, Zachary Michael Adams. <laughs> James Henry Braganshire. Jacob Ryan Cover. <laughs> Jacob Taylor Diller. <laughs> Jacob, 
Nicholas Allen Lapiana, cum laude. Martin Giovanni Lassard. Joseph Matthew Navari. Drake Ashton Westerbeck. Liberal Arts, Bachelor of Arts, David Shurrod Brown. <laughs> Music Performance, Bachelor of Arts, Matthew Joseph McCarthy. Philomena Marie Parrish, cum laude. Mary Nicole Vanderberg, summa cum laude. Philosophy, Bachelor of Arts, Nathan, Ch Nathan Charles Damarano, magna cum laude. Joshua David Tomoski, Magda Cum Laude. <laughs> Philosophy and Theology, Bachelor of Arts, Michael R. Dugan. Clayton Thomas Hauser. <laughs> Studio Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Caitlin Marie Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Theology, Bachelor of Arts, Scott Anderson Becker, cum laude. Mm -hmm. Brett Allen McCourt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are the graduates from the School of Humanities and Fine Arts. Counselor Education, Master of Science, Darius Lamont McGee. <laughs> Criminology, Master of Science, Talfiq Ololade Amokomowo. Curriculum and Instruction, Master of Science, Diana Marie Bruno Fronzek. Robert Michael Petula, Jr. John Joseph Vida. Instructional Design and Technology, Master of Science, Alicia Sky Mamul. <laughs> Special Education, Master of Science, Megan K. 
Catherine Smith. Anthropology, Bachelor of Arts, Miranda Noel Baranchak. <laughs> Kelly Jane Conaway, cum laude. <laughs> Philip Anthony Hoffman. Communication, Bachelor of Arts, Delphine Julian Bredniak. Michael G. Brinker. Hannah Catherine Krovac. Maria Lynn Delera, summa cum laude. Ellen Grace De Simone, magna cum laude. Marissa Marie Duncan. Cameron Marco Eckert. Kyle Patrick Garris. Joseph Michael Gunther Hoffner, cum laude. Derek Vincent Hughes. Olivia Francis London. Samantha Davis Marchioni. Alexander Michael Mooser. Deshaun J. Ocient Kelly. Benjamin Kenneth Shannon. Samantha K. Sluger. Cassandra Lynn Smith. Jacob Tyler Todd. Nicole Sierra Wilson. John Matthew Watechko, magna cum laude. Criminology, Law and Society, Bachelor of Arts, Nico Joseph Alessandro. Damon Lavert Black, Jr. Megan Renee Delera, summa cum laude. Bryce Aubrey Dickens. Cody Robert Deach. Tyler Leonard Fink. Morgan Elizabeth Gron, magna cum laude. Rebecca Grace Guy. Woo! 
Anthony Eugene Hogeback. Matthew Austin Krotowski. John William Kip Lindstrom. Jacqueline Louise McCarthy Cum Laude. Morgan Paige Murphy. Shelby Marie Knoll. Ashley Nicole Oravets, magna cum laude. Coy Joseph Patterson, Jr. Dante Edward Porter. Colton David Robinson. Sherby Samplis. Anthony Vincent Sestito. Hunter Christian Sharp. Ryan Matthew Sosnick, cum laude. David Alexander Stunden. Zachary Zane Zagorski, cum laude. Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Science. Abby Eileen Conrad, magna cum laude. Sarah Caitlin Cox, summa cum laude. Taylor Sue Coyne, cum laude. Allison Patricia Cross, summa cum laude. Marissa Nicole Falkowski, magna cum laude. Christina Ashley Famularo, cum laude. Mariah Lee Farocco, cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Ann Fetty, cum laude. <laughs> Maeve Eileen Hasselman, magna cum laude. Douglas John Huff, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emily Ruth Miller, magna cum laude. <laughs> Brittany Lynn Winkowski, magna cum laude. Middle grade education, Bachelor of Science. Hannah Olivia Earhart, magna cum laude.
Bridget Ann Kaufman, cum laude. Michaela Loring McMullen, summa cum laude. Joshua Michael Suzek, magna cum laude. Psychology, Bachelor of Science, Joseph Thomas Bauman. Brittany Marie Beckwith. Julie Dean Sahula. Margaret Louise Zapsky, summa cum laude. Joyelle Kenya Gaines. Elise Kathleen Glad. Matthew Vincent Jodas. Alexis Marie Luthold. Emily Ann McCoyak. Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Haley Nicole Martin, Cum Laude. <laughs> Emily Marie Petro, Cum Laude. <laughs> Jessica Star Redisic, Magna Cum Laude. Nicole Lynn Wrights, cum laude. Alicia Ivana Romero. Brenton Christian Sai, summa cum laude. Brittany Morgan Thomas, cum laude. <laughs> Kiara Ann Vorderbruggen. I got it. Sarah Nicole Weiss. Kelly Ann Williams, magna cum laude. Samantha Rose Zarelius. Psychology Education, Bachelor of Arts, Caroline Rebecca Colcom. Sociology, Bachelor of Arts, Olivia Rose Saratelli. Sean Cotter Jackson. The Bearcat Best.
The Bearcat Best, Building Excellence Through Skills Training, Transition to Adulthood Program, serves students having developmental and intellectual disabilities by providing training in areas of academics, self-advocacy and social skills, independent living skills, and vocational skills. Geared toward preparing the students for competitive employment and participation in their communities, the Bearcat Best Program at St. Vincent College recognizes these students who, as unique learners, are ready to make a meaningful contribution to society, and we acknowledge them today with a certificate of program completion. Caitlin M. Grove. <laughs> Nicholas Sergey Popovich. Michelle Marie Savage. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty of the School of Social Sciences, Communication and Education, I congratulate our amazing graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present to you the graduates of St. Vincent College, class of 2018. Oh. Good afternoon. Um, before I begin, I would like to start with a cheerful round of applause for all of the mothers in the room. It's Mother's Day tomorrow, and without them, we're nothing, so. <laughs> Welcome, and thank you for joining us this afternoon to honor and celebrate the class of 2018. To my fellow classmates, I'm honored to stand here and represent you. Congratulations on all your present and future success. I know there are a lot of people here who four years ago never thought they'd be here. So I'd like to congratulate all those who never thought you'd walk at graduation, who never thought you'd become anything. You're here today, you should be really proud of that. I'd be remiss if I did not thank all those that have helped me get to this point. First, I'd like to thank God, who makes all things possible. <laughs> to parents, family, friends, faculty, staff, and alumni, which is now us, and the greater St. Vincent community, 
Thank you for your continuous support, trust, and prayers. We could not possibly be here without you. I'd personally be remiss if I did not take the opportunity to thank my parents and brother Zach. Thanks for making me who I am today. <laughs> St. Vincent provided us with more, than an ac with more than the academic degrees that we all just received today. St. Vincent provided us with a lifetime of fond memories, strong critical thinking skills, empathy, intentionality, and the toll to serve others. I can't even begin to describe the lifelong relationships I had with some of the best people I know. I can't even also describe the impact that this tiny school in Latrobe has had on my short life. But this is just the beginning. This is the beginning of something so beautifully designed and created by God. As we continue on this journey, we must look back and reflect on the things that St. Vincent provided us, what makes St. Vincent so unique, and how we can use those things to continue the path less traveled. The Benedictine tradition strongly influence our campus. We see this in many ways. We see it in friendly smiles, hellos, door openings, and as Brian said last year, when Patty uses a meal instead of flex. We also see this when Tucker wags his tail as students flood the Cary Center after a busy day of finals. Shout out, Tucker. The role of St. Benedict fosters hallmarks that are woven within the fibers of this campus. Hallmarks that visitors and guests feel immediately as they enter this campus. St. Vincent provided us with the foundational work for a wholesome life. Values such as hospitality, community, love in Christ and neighbor will echo in our minds and our hearts as we journey through life. And on a more tangible note, St. Vincent provided us with a really awesome degree, something we all should be really proud of. There are numerous reasons, as you can see, that make St. Vincent so unique. The small class sizes, the beautiful campus, all the aspects that we have come to know and to love. I know Mitch mentioned this earlier, but as a tour guide, my favorite question to answer is, what's your favorite part about St. Vincent? Well, my favorite part about St. Vincent is also your favorite part about St. Vincent. It's the people. At St. Vincent, seemingly average people are empowered to do things beyond what they thought capable. It's the unsung heroes that make St. Vincent so special. We empower one another to be the best version of ourselves. We've cultivated a culture of unity, spirituality, integrity, and the most important of these, love. Love for school, love for future aspirations, love for one another, and love for self. As we heard today, I can really say that this is a kind campus, and I hope you continue that throughout your lives. Four years ago, I was like most of you high school seniors, very apprehensive of what the future would hold. For me, I didn't realize a piece of paper in the hat would provide me with one of the best things that happened to you and me. And I didn't realize that God was placing me somewhere I'd be challenged, stimulated, and enthused. And like you all, I didn't realize how this school would turn into my second home. The Benedictine hallmark of Conversatio comes to mind, shout out Dr. Crum, when I think of my time at St. Vincent, a trickier hallmark. It means to be transformed in every part of one's life so that God's own image becomes transparent and palpable. Whether you have realized it or not, we have grown throughout our time at St. Vincent College. We are better off now more than ever because of the education that St. Vincent provided us. The other day, I was taking pictures with DJ, and we saw the new entrance sign and noticed the word college was admitted, omitted, excuse me. At first, I thought this was really strange, but uh, now I think it's perfectly symbolic of St. Vincent because St. Vincent's impact goes beyond just an education. St. Vincent's professors that care, it's custodial workers that know you, know you by name, it's Bearcat Best, it's standing with love and community, whether in the classroom, on the sports field, or barely standing at Falbo's on Wednesday. St. Vincent's tradition, from orientation and pod wars to homecoming festivities and Founders Day, Sports Friendship Day, Spring Family Weekend, The Voice, Mr. SVC, and much, much more. St. Vincent's service, ranging from service learning to volunteer work by clubs and sports teams, St. Vincent is in you and I, and St. Vincent is that love of Christ. We all have so many cherished people and memories. I encourage all of you to appreciate the value of each moment, be loving, and be loved. I encourage you to be strong, powerful, confident alumni of St. Vincent College. And lastly, I encourage you to continue to be all that St. Vincent embodies. Thank you, congratulations, and God bless you in your future.
thank you, Lucas. And thank you, graduates, on behalf of the St. Vincent community for everything that you've done, especially your kindness, the, your presence over the past years, and the fond memories you leave with us. We look forward to hearing of your many accomplishments when you return to this home in years to come. Now I ask you to stand, and gentlemen, remove your caps for the singing of the St. Vincent College alma mater. We ask that everyone join in the singing. The lyrics can be found in the program. The class of 2018 graduates, Miss Mary Ann Vandenberg, Miss Philomena Parrish, and Mr. Mitchell G. Farrell will lead in the singing of the alma mater. Heavenly Father, we are overflowing with joy as we celebrate the accomplishments of these men and women. As they depart from this wonderful neighborhood, may they take with them the Benedictine values so important to us, the knowledge they obtained from their time with us, and the friendships that have helped to form them while here. Bless them with the gifts to apply these values the knowledge and relationships they have received to the numerous challenges in our world. May the following blessing from the Hebrew scriptures be theirs. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 